Yay, it's Britain Germany time. Woohoo! Hi everybody, welcome back to A Brit in Germany. This week, the Mighty Quiz is returning. It's back. Oh yes, it's back, people. So here comes the quiz question. Do -do -do. What animal is on the German coat of arms? Is it A, a deer, a hirsch? Is it B, a unicorn, an einhorn? Or is it C, an eagle, an adler? I suppose it's a hard question if you don't live in Germany, but if you do live in Germany, you'll probably know for sure, actually. Stay tuned for the answer because it's coming up sometime in the video, perhaps at the end, let's see, I'm not quite sure yet. <laughs> There's loads of little things that I've noticed about Germany since I've been here. The first thing on my list revolves around one of these babies, a mobile phone, aka a handy. Holding it upside down, <laughs> here we go. Something happened to me, which is quite annoying. A few years ago, I wanted to use my German phone to make an emergency call from a bus station because I missed the bus and I couldn't contact anybody because my sim card was dead. Yes, it was dead. I couldn't call anybody. I was stuck at the bus station, really sad and alone and scared. I went to my mobile phone provider and I asked them what the heck is happening. I couldn't use my phone when I needed to. And they told me that if you do not use your phone or top up your phone after a year, it gets deactivated. <gasps> oh, hi everyone. I just realized that this also happens in England. It's not just in Germany, but I did discover it for the first time when I was in Germany. Okay, enjoy the rest of the video. I just did not expect this to happen and that's a major bummer. Jeez, you have to what, buy a new SIM card? What's going on? Why do they do this? Tell me why! <laughs> Perhaps they do this because SIM cards that aren't used, the number can be passed on to somebody else. And the second thing on my list, oopsie, <laughs> these babies, buses. In England, we tend to have double-decker buses like this one. In Germany, double-deckers are quite rare, apart from those tourism buses in Berlin or so. The buses in my town are called, they're called a Gelenkbus, which translates to articulated bus or a bendy bus or a caterpillar bus. And they look a bit like this. The Galenk bus is basically two carriages joined together by a contraption that looks like an accordion. It looks like an accordion, but it doesn't sound like an accordion, which is a shame because that would be quite a fun little effect. <laughs> Between the two carriages is a giant metal disc which turns when the first carriage turns. It's quite clever, really. They were in England between 2001 and 2011, but they proved really unpopular. The double decker ruled supreme. What's the plural of bus? The Gleckbusser have doors in the middle. In England, I know that this was a way that people dodged paying for fares, so they didn't buy tickets. I don't know if that's happening here a lot, maybe it is. It's a big difference for me to see a bus that's joined up. Another difference between England and Germany is medicine aka medizin. If you want to buy medications, aka aka Arzneimittel, you have to go to an apotheker. You can't just stroll into a supermarket and buy your paracetamol. In England you can do that, you can get pharmacies in the back of supermarkets. The process is quite different really. Talk to the pharmacist and they can advise you what medicine you need. So it's sort of like going to a little mini doctor I suppose. You can't just pick out and choose your paracetamol because everything is kept in the back room, safe and sound, away from people's grubby hands. So you have to ask the pharmacist, can I have some paracetamol please? And then she'll say, oh, what's wrong with you? Do you have a headache or do you have stomach ache? And then you say, oh, I have mm, actually foot ache. So she'll go to the back, bring you out the medicine and then you pay for it like that. I did speak English a couple of times with the pharmacist, but now I can speak German, so that's all good. Another thing about Apotheken is you can buy your medicine online as well. And I find that it's a little bit cheaper to buy medicine online. That's what I do. <laughs> I've never bought medicine online. It's the first thing I've done when I've come to Germany. I do miss actually going to the supermarket and picking out my own medicine products. Please change the law, Germany, please. <laughs> oh, new video, laws that should be changed. If you want to buy things like plasters, which aren't medication, you can buy those in supermarkets or drugstores. Yeah, 
The next thing is cycle lanes. I love to cycle. I love my bicycle. I use her every day. I polish her every day. Okay, I don't really polish her every day, but I really love my bike. The great thing about Germany is that there are cycle lanes everywhere. Cycle lanes are called a Radweg. What's the plural of Radweg? Radwege are everywhere. They're all over the place. It's great. The streets are really wide. There's plenty of space. Don't forget to ring your bell. The pedestrian needs to know you're coming. The good thing about cycle lanes here is it makes it really easy to cycle to work, to cycle to the shops. You don't have to use your car. You can survive without a car, which is pretty cool, I have to say. If you live in the middle of nowhere, you probably want to have a car because you don't want to cycle for two hours to the supermarket. No. You know that you can cycle somewhere if there's a blue sign with a white bicycle symbol on it. Sometimes it's split into two, so you know which side you cycle on. There's another sign where the cyclist and the pedestrian are on top of each other, and that means pedestrians and cyclists have to share the pavement. Germany is very Fahrrad friendly, and that means bicycle friendly. Yes. Thumbs up for cycling in Germany. And the last thing on my list today is Spielplätze. Is that right? Yes, it is the right one. Die Spielplätze. But in particular, I mean Die Spielplätze for the burger shops. Wink, wink, I think you know what I mean. I noticed that most of these burger shops have Spielplätze attached to it, which I think is great. And that's quite a rare thing to find in England. And I think it's because Germany is quite a big country compared to England. There's a lot more space in Germany. So there's a lot more space for Spielplätze. Children have it good in Germany. Is it just me? Let me know. Maybe the reason that there's so many Spielplätze outside these burger shops is because the burger shop has a guilty conscience that they're feeding children junk food. The Spielplatz is a chance for the child to burn off those extra calories. That's about it, folks. But I haven't forgotten the quiz question. Oh no. The answer to the quiz question is... C! The Adler! Well done if you got that right. The Adler is called Der Bundesadler. Der Bundesadler translates to the Federal Eagle. And I know the eagle originated from the Roman times, so it's a very, very old symbol of Germany. It's time to say goodbye. It's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'm sure there's gonna be a few more of these videos to come because I'm always noticing more and more differences. I'll see you soon in the next Brit in Germany video. Yeah, I think my bus is coming soon, so I better go. Oh, here it comes. Here's the bus. Okay, bye.